using my Disney cup. How about that? Isn't that pretty nice? Plus, I got a whole pot of coffee right next to me. And I couldn't find my thermos, so I brought the carafe out of our uh, camper. But, this is... Man, it's getting hot in here. Whew. I need a haircut, too. But anyway. So... This is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make another video today on some stuff that Ryan and I are going to do, some cleanups we got to do still. I still have a few lingering ones. We got a heavy frost this morning, so we're just waiting for it to lift so we can uh, back these properties up. But right now the leaves are all frozen on the ground, so you're really not moving much anyway. But we are, kick that heat down. Um, this video is going to be about problem customers and you know what do you do and the only reason this shouldn't bother me but for some reason it really is bothering me and I think I know why which I'll get to but here's the scenario now I have a customer that I've been mowing for three years I think and their neighbor next door you know, every year I mow it, I can tell they barely mow their property. It doesn't grow that much anyway, but they only have grass in the front. The back of their property is all concrete. They have a huge shed back there, and they have a small area that I'm guessing was grass at one time, but it's not anymore. It's mud. And then they have, like, all this slate rock stacked up all around the fence line, and then there's, like, a thin two in or two foot path in between the back of this monster garage thing they have back there which you can't even get to with a vehicle so I think it's like a workshop but he owns a roofing and siding company anyway so a couple times this past summer the wife had seen me mowing next door and she asked me you know can you just mow my front yard it's really really small in the front there and uh you know she said what would it be to mow it and I realized who she was apparently there's these two guys that I went to school with one of them graduated the year after me one graduated the year before me um, but they've been friends of like mine and my brothers going through school and we, we've known them forever but uh, so anyway I figured out that you know it's the parents the stepmom and the dad of these two boys so you know I told her don't worry about it I'll just cut it real quick so I, I cut it for her twice didn't charge her anything I was right there anyway doing the neighbors took me like 10 minutes if that to cut it um, so she asked me about a month and a half ago if I could do their leaves and I said yeah and as soon as I said yeah I was already regretting it because I know that Ryan had gone there like three years ago and asked and they had asked him for a bid for a spring cleanup and they hadn't cleaned up their leaves in years. They were stacked up, piled up. It, it was pretty bad. And in the back, you know, you got to get them all across the back, across all this concrete, which I was thinking, you know, on concrete, they'd be easier to push. And, uh, you know, it'd be no big deal because they go, you can blow them across concrete a lot easier than um, the grass, for instance. So, you know, I told her, yeah, I'd do them for her, and I, she asked how much, and I know Ryan had told him like 450 to clean it up, so I told her I'd do it for her for like 300 bucks, and, uh, you know, like two, 300 bucks, and I would just get them all blown out, the bulk of everything blown out, and get them pushed down to the road, down their concrete driveway that's pretty steep, and it's super slick, it's not like grooved or anything like a concrete driveway should be, according to code in our area, because of how dangerous and slippery it is, and you can slide right down into traffic. But, uh, you know, so I knew there were a few obstacles here and there. But, like I said, I'd gone to school with their boys, and I'd do the one right next door anyway. So, I was trying to be nice and give them a discount, you know, give them a deal. And, uh, so, she had kept saying, I'd done the neighbors like three times so far. And she kept saying, you know, don't do mine yet, don't do mine. I'm waiting for these big oaks to fall in the back, which there's a lot of oaks back there. And a lot of leaves coming down. And I said, okay, okay, and I, you know, I kept putting it off, putting it off, because she wanted me to. Well, over the last week and a half, she had texted me like three, four times saying, it's ready, are you sure you're going to be able to do it? You know, the town or the village isn't going to pick up leaves anymore. And I said, you know, if they don't, I'll haul them away. You know, Ryan and I will come through with the vac system, and I'll vac them up. But, uh, you know, that's what I was thinking. We'd go through and vac them up. But I told her, I go, if they don't haul them away, or if the village doesn't suck them up, then I'll, I'll just take them with me. And uh, so for last like week and a half, like I said, she's been texting me, you know, when are you going to come? When are you going to get here? You know, we'd really like to get these cleaned up, this and that. So 
I bumped a couple of my regular full-time customers to the side and we went there yesterday and did hers. Now, we were there, it, it should have taken like an hour and we were there all of three hours, maybe a little bit more. They were so bad and so wet and so thick that I could only get them in piles and then halfway and then I had to move. They have like all these sheds in the back, these plastic sheds. They have all these propane tanks stacked up. I were like 30 propane tanks, um, like small 10 pounders, 20 pounders, um, and then just stuff everywhere. So, you know, I had to move all it out of the way and I was able to just squeeze the walker in through the gate and around them leaves to push them to one end in quarters. I had to take them in sections because they were so heavy, the walker would barely push them. You know, pushed them in quarters down and then pushed them out the gate and then went in, grabbed more, pushed them down, pushed them out the gate. And I did that like four times and then Ryan took them with his ZK with the leaf plow and pushed them down the driveway to the street, which he also had to take them in sections. He couldn't even push them down this driveway going downhill. That's how thick, wet, and heavy they were. And then we went through and we blew it all out again. Now the back of their house is, you know, all siding, but there's a bunch of big picture windows and glass sliding doors, which had mud marks scraped all down it from their dogs, I'm guessing. And from the area that is mud back there, there was dog crap everywhere, just everywhere back there. Um, you could smell this horrible smell. I knew there was like dead skunks, or, or not skunks, uh, squirrels, mice, things like that underneath these leaves. Because back from the days when Ryan and I used to do pools, and they would get down in the cover and they drowned in that water, and you'd go to open the pool for the season, and you'd vac all that stuff out of there with a pool vac. It was the same smell. So. I knew there was a couple dead something in there. And uh, so anyway, we just kept blowing it out, blowing it out, taking care of it all. And uh, we were able to get it all done. Now the piles out the road, there was one on each side of the property out in the front. It could have filled my dump truck probably three times. There was so much. And you know, we got probably 90% of it out. Now there was some I couldn't get out because it was all in between all the stuff they had piled up everywhere. Um, and a lot of it was frozen to that slate rock all the way around the back. There was nothing I could do about it. I mean, it was just there. So we get done with it, and uh, we go out and we finish out the day. Well, the guy calls me last night and leaves me a voicemail. I missed his call and said, Randy, you know, give me, this is so-and-so, give me a call. We need to have a conversation. And I was thinking, great. So I call the guy back, and he starts right off the bat just, what the F and F did you think? You were doing over here what the f do you call this job you left an f and mess in this and i go whoa whoa i said slow it down pal i go first off don't swear at me i said if you swear at me i'll hang up right now we'll both go our own ways and and that'll be the end of that i go if you want to have a conversation with me like a civil human being i can fix whatever issue you have any problem you have anything you're not happy with i can come back and fix but you need to talk to me like a normal person and he said, okay, okay, well, I wasn't swearing at you, I was just swearing. I go, I don't care. Don't swear at all, or this conversation ends right here. And he's okay, okay. And so he goes, well, let me ask you, do you think you're done here? And I said, well, let me say this. Tell me the issue that you have, and I'll tell you how I can fix it for you to make you happy. He said, well, there's a ton of leaves everywhere. And I said, well, I have to disagree with that. First of all, there's not a ton of leaves. We got 90% of your leaves out there. And, you know, they're all out the road. He goes, I could have paid a couple kids down the road to come and do what you did. I said, first of all, that's not happening. I said, and I explained to him what we did, how we did it, how I had to use the machines, how the 30 horsepower machines were barely pushing it, how we had to take it in sections. I go, if you'd like, walk to the end of your driveway and try picking up some of them leaves. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You know, I said, it was a lot of work. And uh, I said, once the ground thaws out, we're supposed to have a couple 40 degree days next week. I'd be more than happy to come through once they're thawed out and blow them out and do another blowout for you. He said, well, that's the other problem. You blew mud and stuff all over my back windows, all over the siding, you know, it's all over. And I said, listen, I'm really sorry that happened. I'm not denying that happened. You know, maybe some stuff did get blown across there on the back of your house. I go, you know, it's that time of year. It's been rained on, snowed on. The leaves have been there forever. It was just, you know, packed into the mud, packed, you know, like glued to the concrete. And sometimes that, that stuff happens. I said, I'd be more than happy to come over and clean off the back of your house 
in that in, over the next couple days I'll get over there and I'd be more than happy to clean the windows and to clean the back of the house off and then you know next week when it falls out a little bit I'll come and do another blowout and I'll get everything out and if anything gets on the house I'll wash the back of the house off again no problem He's well, all right, well, you know, didn't you just rake it all out like a normal person? And I said, listen, I said, there you are, you know, attempting to insult me again. I'm not stupid. I, I'm understanding what you're trying to say here and what you're doing. I said, but no, I didn't rake it out. Rakes wouldn't even move that stuff. My blowers push air at almost 200 miles an hour. I said, you know, and they barely even move those leaves. That's why I had to use the machine. Rakes were not going to move those wet, thick, heavy leaves and mud that came out of there. And uh, I said, so it, rakes weren't even an option. And uh, he said, well, uh, all right, I guess the wife's very unhappy about the back of the house. I said, I can understand that, and that's fine. And, and I will, I'm more than happy to come and clean it. You're not going to get charged extra for it. We made the mess, and I'd be happy to come take care of it for you. Well, okay, okay, let, let's go with that. And, uh, you know, just let us know when you're going to be here. And, you know, so we can make sure the dogs aren't out back, and we'll go from there. I said, okay, no problem. He said, well, I'm sorry for swearing. And I said, not a problem. We got it taken care of and we'll get this fixed. So I get off the phone with him and I'm sitting there thinking, now, I've been warned by a couple contractors not to do work for this guy. And I went and I did it anyway. And so I got off the phone with him and I call Ryan and I tell him like, man, you were right. I should have never done work for this guy. He's losing his mind mind and he thinks we didn't do anything over there Ryan goes are you kidding did he see the amount of leaves out to the road I said I know I know well while I was on the phone with Ryan the guy calls back and he says my wife is very unhappy and she said she already tried cleaning it and stuff won't come off the back of the house which was a crap shoot it's it, he's full of crap okay well we have some running around to do and I'm gonna finish up that story I just tried to upload that video and turns out my camera must have cut off at some point um, I actually recorded that yesterday or the day before, um, but my camera cut off at some point, so I'm going to finish it up right now. Alright, so to finish off that story, if I remember real quick where I left off, I had to stop at my dealer real quick and give him some uh, helper springs for a trailer I found in my garage. I'm cleaning out my garage to try to make room for this new mower, and uh, it needs to be cleaned out anyway. But anyway, so back to that story. So in this voicemail he said, he said that his wife had already went out there and tried to clean it and she couldn't get it cleaned off, which like I said is crap because if it was just loose mud that blew up on there from the blower, then you know, it's nothing that probably wouldn't have washed off with a hose with a decent tip on it, you know, no big deal. But uh, so it's nothing that couldn't have been cleaned or couldn't have been washed off. But anyway, so he continued on this voicemail this was a voicemail by the way when he called me back because I was still on the phone with Ryan so in his voicemail he says that um, so she's very unhappy she tried to clean it couldn't get it clean she's gonna call a professional window cleaner to come and clean this thing which is probably more crap because apparently they don't like to spend money at all from what I'm hearing and from what I've seen and uh, he, so he says uh, she doesn't want you back on the property she doesn't want you to come back to clean it. She doesn't want you to come back to blow out any more leaves. She doesn't want you back on the property at all. And I think that's the part that bothers me because all the years that I've worked for other companies and all the years I've been in business, you're talking like 21 years total that I've worked for other companies, done a little bit on the side of my own in my business, the years I've been in business. I've never ever had anybody tell me not to come back on their property. I've had people call and not happy with certain situations, you know, and then I go and I fix it and no big deal, it's done which is exactly how this one should have gone. But, so that, that's the result, you know, that we don't want you back on the purse, she doesn't want you back on the property. He said, give it a couple days, you know, give her a call, let her calm down. And he kind of laughed a little bit. He goes, she gets a little out of hand sometimes, so just let her chill out. And he goes, but give her a couple days and give her a call, talk to her about it. So, I call Ryan right back and I tell him what that one said. You know, after I got a phone Ryan, I listen to that voicemail. I called him back and I tell him what that one said. And he goes, yeah, I saw that coming. He said, they're just trying to get out of paying the bill altogether. They got 90% of their leaves out, which is more than they've taken out in years. And uh, he goes, they're just, they got almost all of it out. They're happy. They don't care about the little bit that's left. They just want to get out of paying the bill. So they're hoping that, you know, they won't get a bill now. Or you'll send them one, they'll deduct cleaning costs off the bill. That's why they threw that in there. So... 
you know, I thought about it, and, I'd let it, and I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm actually happy they called back and said that because now with the way they've been, I'm thinking, I'm going to go back there and blow this out. They're going to stand at those back doors and windows the whole time, stare me down, watch every little move I make, and, like, come out and say, oh, you missed the leaf there, you missed them there. You know what I mean? I'm just, I was like, you know what, I, I'm cool with this. I'm glad that I don't have to go back. Done. So... You know, I had dinner with my wife and kids, and I watched TV for a while, and I went to bed. And I'm laying there in bed, and I can't fall asleep. I'm just, I'm awake. I can't fall asleep. It's, it's annoying me. So I go downstairs, and I pull up my laptop. And I bring up my letterhead for my business, and I start to write them a letter. And I explain to them in the letter, you know, you know, I start a letter off with saying, you know, I apologize for, you know, the, the way things worked out. And I'm sorry that you weren't happy. Uh, I'm sorry that you didn't give me the opportunity to come back and fix it and make it right you know I, I wouldn't like to end it on this note but you know and then I went in detail about everything we went through again to do the work that we did how we did it the time we were there um, the things we had to move to clean out around certain areas the um, of the dog poop that now my equipment and Ryan and I are both covered in and you know I went through details and everything I, I explained how I moved all my full-time customers to squeeze them in to try to help them out to get it done to uh, you know so that they wouldn't be so worried about it um, you know I threw in there again about how I mowed their lawn twice for free this summer because of the relationship I threw in there and how I said you know I normally would have charged 400 plus for a job like this but I was only going to charge you like two three hundred bucks because you know the uh, how I knew your boys and you know let me throw in there we knew these boys in school we haven't really talked to them since if we see them out somewhere we say hi we shoot the shit whatever but it's not like uh you know like we hang out all the time or like we're best friends or nothing but um you know, so I threw all that in there, you know, how, why they got the discount, why I bumped full-time customer, year-round customers out of the way to help them out, and, uh, and then at the bottom of it, I wrote, as of this letter, your bill is null and void, you will not get an invoice from Countryside Lawn, I don't want your money, and consider this one, or consider this even, you don't owe me anything, and on that note, please do not ever contact me in the future. Countryside Lawn will never do work for you again. And I left it at that. And I mailed it out. Um, I threw it in the mail Wednesday. No mail ran on Wednesday because they were doing, uh, they were honoring uh, George H.W. Bush for the funeral. So post houses were apparently closed. So it would have went out yesterday. Today's Friday. And uh, so they'll probably get it tomorrow. Um, but that's that. So I'm wiping my hands clean of it. If they call me, I'm not even going to answer the phone. I don't want to deal with them. But so how would you guys handle this? You know, you write it in the comments. I know some are probably going to bash me for the way I handled it. Um, some will probably say, you know, you did it much nicer than I would have, you know. So I know the comments will go either way. But, you know, throw down in the comments. How would you guys have handled this? What would you have done in this situation, taking every single aspect of it into account? How would you have handled this situation? Um, but on that note, so I'll end this here. It's definitely long enough. And uh, a lot of people have asked me for videos on, um, you know, do I have any lawn care stories or anything like that? I've got a ton of stories. Of some funny, some are like, oh my God, you would probably rip your hair out. You know, I got a lot of pretty cool stories to tell. But, you know, in this time of year when there's not a lot of, whole lot of work going on, I mean, that could be potential videos. So if that's stuff you guys want to see, I know Curtis had done one about a month ago, you know, about some of his lawn care stories. And you guys know I love Curtis. I love watching Weed Whacker Lawn Care. Um, so somebody had given him that idea, so maybe that's where they got the idea to ask me for it. But either way... Um, if that's something you guys would like to see on future videos, like I said, you know, I probably have five, six cleanups left to do. I'll knock them out next week. It's supposed to be in the 40s. And after that, you know, it's snow plowing or pretty much nothing. So I'll be looking for video ideas. And uh, if you guys would like me to make some videos on some lawn care stories, you know, let me know. Put that in the comments too. But thanks for listening to my story, guys. And uh, like I said, what would you do?